And I was thinking about guilt, and I was thinking about conviction. And I think we get those two confused. We get them confused sometimes. But anyway, I'm going to read first, and then I'm going to talk a little bit. And as you're doing that, you can purpose in your heart what you want to give today and choose to walk into that today. And verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, I'm going to read this off, and I know, but I want to just bring a different perspective out of it. And verse 6 says, Remember this, He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And now, how many of you know what will means? He will sow bountifully. He will reap bountifully. We will walk forth in that. Then verse 7 it says, Let each man give according as he has determined or purposed in his heart. What have you determined? What is speaking to your heart and what is God telling you today? And sometimes God tells us something and we don't understand why, but he's telling us something. He's saying, I'm giving you this feeling, I'm giving you this experience, I'm, I, I am, I'm waking you up in your heart for a reason. Either it's giving money or it's something else, but I'm giving you something. How many of you ever come to the point where you feel your heart just kind of pounding because you know something's about to happen? And you know something's going to take place and you need to take place because something's happening there. Open your heart today so that God can determine in you what he wants you to do today. Amen? Amen. Do I just I need to sit here and smile for a while? <laughs> and he says, determine purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now there's times I realize that people feel pushed and giving, but I want you to understand that God already has determined something. God already has a purpose in you something already. And obedience, I'm not just talking about obedience of tithe, I'm talking about the general part of giving. He says, not grudging or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you always having all sufficiency in everything you bound in every good work. I believe God wants us to be able to be able to plant a seed and be able to flow in his presence so that what is in your heart already so that God is able to do all grace, so God is able to do all things and be able to release all things. It's when we walk in obedience because God says that it takes us to take the first action to see the full action. A lot of times we have to take the first action to see full action. And a lot of times we wonder, God, where are you? And I'm just saying, have you determined in your heart to move forward? A lot of times we are determined in our heart, but we see and we don't see it fit to do what is determined in our heart or what's purposed in our heart. We, we get convicted. How many of you ever been getting convicted before here? Anybody? And we get convicted. Maybe you're convicted now. Conviction is not guilt. Conviction is a place of obedience. Conviction is a place of saying, yes, God. A lot of times we would do is saying, well, don't feel guilty. I don't want you to feel guilty, but I want you to be convicted in God's word. Amen? Just this one point, just this one, one point I heard, and I like this. It's a delayed obedience is still disobedience. A delayed obedience is still a disobedience. God is a now God. God wants you to do now what he's saying now. What is he saying to you now? That's what he wants you to do now. He won't give you a now word that you can't handle or do. He's going to give you a now word that you can handle and do. Amen? What is the now thing God is speaking about right now? The now thing, the thing that's purpose right now. Just think about that. A delayed obedience is not, it's still disobedience. And the next point I have is, conviction can be mistaken for guilt. I mean, we shouldn't have no guilt, you're right about that. But we still need to deal with our convictions. Amen? A lot of people say, well, I know that God has no guilt, so... You didn't tie this time, so you didn't give this time. No guilt. You're absolutely right. But if you're convicted, you need to deal with it. Because that means God is purposing something in your heart that you need to talk about to Him. That He needs to pull out of you. That you need to speak from. That He needs to utilize you so that He can move you forward. There is no guilt, but when there's a conviction, work with it. 
give in to that place of conviction. Amen? Amen? So conviction is a place fixed of a firm belief. That's what a conviction is. An act of con a convicting a person of an, of an argument or, or evidence. Where conviction is of the evidence. That's conviction. The argument of this evidence. Of the word that many people want to come against. Many people want to try to say it's not so. But the evidence, that's what convicting is. It brings the evidence forth. Amen? And guilt is this. Guilt is a place of feeling, responsibility, and remorse, or some offense, crime, wrong, whether real or imagined. That's what God died for. That's what Jesus died for. He died for those wrong thinkings. He died for the things that you've done in the past. He's died for those things. There is no more guilt. Amen? So today, why wouldn't you give? I want you to think about this. Say, Lord, what are you convicting in my heart? Yeah, beyond, I know I have to be obedient, but what are you convicting in here so I can give cheerfully? What are you convicting and what have you determined in me to do for your kingdom? What is in deter? Don't delay the obedience today if God is calling you to something today. I'm not the judge of that. I'm not in the sermon spirit of saying who needs to give what. That's not me. I'm just here saying the word of God. Determine in your heart right now what God has for you today. Amen? So let's give.